this is this is this is So how long you guys been together? Chaser. Chaser's the band. Um, what's up with Chaser? How long you guys been doing this thing? So Ch- Chaser's uh, going on 20 years now. I established in 2000, actually. So I've Wow. Been, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I know. It's been a long time. So uh, Mike, our singer, Mike Ladon, he's the founding member and uh, been doing it back since high school days. Bunch of kids in high school playing cover songs, you know, about religion songs and the drummer's garage like and then uh, i joined in 2006 and so mike and i've been together for for 15 years now and uh, our drummer davy was kind of our touring drummer for many years dating all the way back to like 2010 and bill joined us in 2015 16 so seven 17 17 all right gave you 15 just, years of credit it just feels like a long time jesse yeah that's so, great so what have you yeah, guys been doing? What, what's been the highlights? Uh, what, what? Uh, I mean, Bill, obviously you came in 2016. I've been checking out your newer stuff and uh-huh. it sounds great. You guys sound like you can, you can shred live. I checked out some YouTube videos and it, it's feeling right. good. I mean, so what brought you to, to, you know, being in punk bands? Like what got you into music? I, I guess it, it's open to whoever, has, yeah, has an idea. Go. Well, for me, um, I grew up mostly on the East Coast, so I really uh, got into a lot of East Coast hardcore stuff. Uh, so Minor Threat, Agnostic Front. Back then, you know, it was all regional, and I really just embraced kind of the uh, the East Coast hardcore punk scene. Um, what, er- where, then, what, uh, what area were you growing up in? Uh, I grew up in Wilmington, Delaware. Okay, Del- heard of it? <laughs> Delaware. Yeah, but we know so it's Delaware. A, it's, it's a, yeah, it's Delaware. It's a it's a suburb outside of Philly, basically uh, Wilmington. Uh, so um, that was my first kind of introduction into the music, and then um, a few years after that, I uh, somebody came back. A friend of mine came back from the West Coast, and he brought it with him like some Bad Religion, and that for me was just a game changer. You know, it was just like it was super aggressive, but it was had like pop melody so it just to me that was like wow like it had all the aggression uh and the fast kind of riffing of the east coast stuff but it just had those great melodies and to me i was like this is this is it for me man like this is like got everything i want you know it's got great songs great singing and just uh aggressive even though i still love hardcore and i always will that's kind of my first love but yeah i have a question so were you already playing guitar when you discovered sort of the west coast style the southern california style of punk I was, um, but mostly, you know, at that point in time, I was really into like rock and metal, you know, as a kid from the 80s, uh, late 80s. uh, That's what I got into guitar. And then uh, so I was already kind of engaged with guitar, but a lot of the metal stuff, you know, I didn't have like money for lessons or anything. So uh, punk to me was a perfect way for me to kind of get into play. I like playing songs. I was never into I don't know. I've always been kind of like I want to play songs that never wanted to just shred a bunch of solos you know you know i wasn't really into that i wanted to play songs so when i got into punk i was like this is exactly what i want i want to be able to play songs so i just started playing to every record i could you know whether it was a a minor threat record or a bad religion record i just tried to learn every song that i could and so uh that really kind of to me that was when i really started playing guitar along with drums and you know even if it was in my bedroom i just really started to kind of get a feel for how to play along to a song instead of just kind of playing in a vacuum, you know? Sure. Sure. Yeah. It's a little different when you, when you start playing with like real people and you get out of your bedroom being alone. Of course. I, I knew I, yeah. when I was just starting out, like I didn't even play an instrument, but I, I wanted to be in a band and I, so I started singing. I started, that was the first thing it was, it was technically before MXPX, but, but we never really did anything. We were just in the garage and just a couple of kids, you know, a few friends of mine. So this this friend of mine, Don, he played guitar. And then this other guy, Johnny, showed up and he could shred like no other. You know, he's just... But then we tried to like play a song together and he could not stay with us. We're just like, what? We don't get what? What happened? So like that was a huge eye opener for me is it's not always necessarily about how much you can shred, but can you shred within the confines of playing with other people? Because that's really what's important, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah, I was the same way. I always wanted to be in a band and I always wanted to play with other people. I'm a band guy, you know, I'm not a, uh, you know, a bedroom shredder, you know, that's not my, that's not what I like. It's not what I care about. I want to write songs and play songs. And I've always, I don't know, that's just kind of, uh, for me, that's the most exciting part of it. And so I'm exactly the same way. And so I put all my effort into playing with people and playing songs. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good good way to go. Jesse, what do you, what about you? That's why Bill's a perfect addition for Chaser. Yeah, it does it, seem to fit, huh? Ex- exactly <laughs> the rhythm guitar that we needed. Yeah, so I got into uh, kind of the earliest music that I listened to was the 90s style melodic skate punk and um, I had older, I have older. Ta- what, what are your favorite bands you got into back then? Uh, face to Face, Bad Religion, No Effects, MXPX, Sincerely. It was actually an MXPX kind of morning today <laughs> for, for this interview. Um, yeah, that, that kind of, the, you know, being from Southern California, the Descendants, and the 90s style melodic skate punk. And my older brother and sister, just that was that was the first music I knew, really, when I was old enough to even start listening to music. So for me, I, I still kind of get criticized by my friends and peers that it's it's still all I listen to. It's what yeah. I go for every time. And that's kind of kind of segues. That's what Chaser is. You know, we're not necessarily trying to reinvent the wheel or break the mold. We, we're really happy with our sound and our style and what we do and what we stand for. And it's that it's that kind of early 90s, uh, late 90s sound. So for me, started playing bass like many other bassists, because drums and guitar were already taken. And uh, I was <laughs> <laughs> right, though, and was uh, with a, some friends. I think we were sixth or seventh grade, and we were going to do a talent show and had a drummer, had a guitarist. So went out and rented a bass, which I actually have my first bass still here. And uh, yeah, rented, rented a bass, tested it out, learned a few songs just to do the talent show. And then for me, I kind of realized that I really enjoyed the instrument and actually bought the bait, went back and bought the bass and, and, uh, the rest really was history. Really feel like I'm a bassist through and through, you know, I kind of fell into it, but that's just feeling the bass lines and such, you know, as a bassist, obviously. Yeah. So many stories about people accidentally becoming the bass player. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. Yeah. But I love it. I I actually, you will talk about your, your album and and the songs a bit in, in a minute, but, uh, the bass lines, you know, they're, they're not slouchy, you know, and, and, and that's something, you know, you guys are a four piece, so it's one guitar and, yeah. and one bass, you know, and, yeah. and that's your yeah. stringed instruments and drums and vocal. And Jesse, you sing a lot of, a lot of the backup vocals yeah. and, and you guys are highly interactive when it comes to the gang kind of like, you guys do incorporate that hardcore thing, uh, I like that actually because I actually grew up listening to a lot of the bands that both of you guys grew up listening to. Yeah. Honestly, um, just uh, on the East Coast, I didn't really back then. It wasn't so much East Coast or West Coast. It was just whatever I could find, you know, for me yeah. um, because I was getting tapes, you know, and I was getting hand me down stuff from my cousin or my sister. So it started with a little new wave, and then it got into punk with with like Rollins Band. Although that's not even super punk. It's kind of I don't know. Is it? Is it doom, doom rock? <laughs> yeah. What is yeah, it? Yeah. it? It's like diary doom rock or something. But it, 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 it struck me in a cool way. And then I got into the sentence and black flag and, and stuff like that. But I didn't know, you know, I didn't know where black flag was from, you know, that kind of thing. You know, we didn't, I didn't even know, honestly, I, I assumed the descendants were from Southern California because of a lot of their lyrical stuff. But back then you just never knew. And, uh, and, and, and also, in, in the same note, you know, when I was listening to punk bands, they were the biggest bands in the world to me. So I was listening to like bands like U2, and then from there to bands like like Black Flag and Circle Jerks and The Descendants and stuff like that. And then I got into, of course, Rancid. Uh, that was right around when MXPX started, was ran- when Rancid started touring yeah. as well. So anyway, but any, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent, but I, I feel you guys both the West coast, the East coast, it's like, there's good parts. And the fact that you guys are actually adding some of that East coast in with that, some of the hardcore, I mean, West coast has hardcore bands, but I feel like they're, they're not as fun as like the East coast hardcore bands. Maybe, uh, they're a little too militant, like <laughs> straight edge or whatever. But, uh, 
whatever whatever your thing is but i mean as far as sound goes i love that east coast hardcore sound sick of it all like how can you get fucking tougher than that you know yeah. and uh and then listening to your new record let's just talk about it right now new album's called dreamers uh came out this year how proud of this record are you guys extremely yeah. very proud yeah yeah very proud i mean we just put so much effort into it this was like uh, a couple of years in the making and we remember like when we were on tour in Europe, we were writing songs in the van. We were just talking about the new songs all the time. Yeah. You know, we just like pulled the guitar out of the case and just like it was like, oh, OK, we got a couple hours. Anytime we had a little bit of time. And I know Jesse and Mike put a lot of work in talking vocals and harmonies and melodies. And of course, I was, you know, kind of in my own bedroom, still working on guitar, you know, patterns and uh the various riffing styles. And we just really put a lot of work individually. And, and obviously we came together and worked together on it too, on the arrangements and stuff. So I don't know. It just seemed like every free moment we had when we were constructing this album, we just, we just dotted every I and crossed every T that we could. We, we wanted to feel like every single part of the record is something we could be proud of and that there would be no filler or no tracks. We were like, Oh, you know, whatever. We wanted every track to just be something we felt was killer. And, uh, we're really happy how it came together. Excellent. Any any Word. any additional thoughts, Jesse? Before I no, Bill, Bill nailed it. We really, <laughs> you know, it's really important to us. We're perfectionists, kind of in our own daily lives as well. And uh, certainly when it comes to writing music, I was actually just listening uh, to one you did with uh, with Lynn from Bad Cop Bad Cop, and you guys were talking about writing lyrics and such. And mm -hmm. that's how we are. Every single word needs to be perfect because words have meaning and every moment in the song needs to be capturing and captivating. Otherwise you're going to lose the audience. So for us, if everything mattered, there was nothing that was more or less important than anything else on the album. And it really took a lot of discipline to, to not lose focus on what we were doing and what we were trying to try to accomplish. So a lot, a lot went into it and we're, I'm just ecstatic with how it turned out and, and how the fans have been receiving it too. That's rad. Let me, let's get into a little bit of that, a lot that went into it, uh, a little, a little more detail. <laughs> so how do you guys put, put songs together? Maybe it's changed over the years, but what was the main sort of workflow that seemed to work well with this, this group of songs, the new album? So, so Mike and I both write kind of songs from front to back in a way. We don't, we don't always add the leads on. We'll hand it over to Bill. And then Bill will also send us some riffs that he has that we'll deconstruct and turn into a song. Or we'll even take some old demos from the graveyard and bring them back and bring old riffs. And so um, we all kind of have different ways. I, I typic Mike and I both typically start with an acoustic guitar. Sometimes I like to go over to an electric guitar so I could hit the palm mutes and hear the tone and the distortion and kind of that, you know, the, the d distortion on a guitar starts to give the li the song a life of its own. Mm -hmm. Right. So we kind of start with just basic concepts. Um, we, we all, we're all songwriters. So we love talking about songwriting too. So we're constantly passing the songs back and forth or Bill will, and Bill, you can share how you go about it. Bill will send us a riff and then we'll take that and write the vocal melodies on top of it. Um, but I think like, like most musicians, it starts with a melody. It starts with just a riff or, you know, jamming on the acoustic guitar, which I could sit and do for hours mm -hmm. and come up with 20 different vocal melodies. You know, most of them are need to be in the trash and, and one sticks, right? Yeah, so, that happens all and, the time. And then we just, we kind of circulate it around and everybody puts their own little stamp on it and uh, it finds its way back to the original creator. And then we kind of, that person will put on the finishing touches. So at least that's how me and Mike and Bill have worked on this yeah. last album. Bill, so, so whatever you got. Jesse, are you, yeah. are you and Mike in the same room on the acoustic and the electric guitar? Are you set? Are you saying you're, you're separately writing songs and then yeah. once the shell is done, so like Jesse, will take yeah. a shell and then Bill has some riffs that you might like a part or something that you're like, Oh, that's a badass part. I'm going to figure out Thanks. if it fits somewhere in something I'm already doing or, you can just start yeah. a brand new idea around that. Yeah. There's a lot of possibilities yeah, there. Bill's, Bill's written some riffs that we've absolutely taken a single riff that we just loved and wrote an entire song around it. Mm -hmm. um, 2020, for example, the intro riff to the song, there was just something unique about it for anybody listening. If you check out the song 2020, A New Direction as well had a cool intro riff. And both those songs, they, there was just a riff that was special. So we built around it. So no, Mike and I aren't in 
in the same room. Uh, we'll send the voice memos to each other. But what we'll then do is we'll get together in a room, usually this room with the instruments, mm. and um, we'll take the shells and we'll spend a couple hours working on a song until it starts to materialize a little bit more. And then that's kind of when we give it back to the respective owner and let them kind of put the finishing touches on. And so it stays with whatever their vision was of the, of the song originally. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it all it all ends up sounding like Chaser though. You you have your kind of a unique yeah. sound. That's Southern California, breakneck speed, get in the pit. Yeah. I like your yeah. bio, by yeah. the way. It was it was well written. The the new one that's on your your website. Um, yes. Yeah. But you were talking about twenty twenty. You know, I still want to stay on like songwriting stuff. Uh, most of the songs, re- you know, they ha- if they have a message, it's 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 uh it's very uplifting for the most part. And it's a little harder to pinpoint, but you decided, let's just call this 2020. So it's, I didn't dissect the lyrics, but I wanted to ask you, like, what, what are some of the themes uh, that you're talking about on this one? Is our society crumbling? You know, because <laughs> Joe Strummer, you know, he, he says the future is unwritten, but uh, we may be doomed to destruction no matter what. I don't know. But uh, what's your idea with that one? So 2020 was definitely uh, kind of your more, uh, classic punk rock song, and it was actually written before the pandemic, well before the pandemic, uh, well before 2020. And it was it was certainly kind of about a little bit that we're doomed, and just looking at the status quo and the direction that we're heading. You know, two steps forward and ten steps back. It feels like sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then as the pandemic was hitting, the song really took on a life of its own. Um, so we kind of doubled down on that, and we named it 2020. But in part, it was actually going to be. Uh, 2020 vision until anti-flag came out with an album called 2020 vision (laughs) (laughs) true true story right so we actually just scratched the the vision and and that was in part what it was was we have 2020 vision now we see what's going on we see more clearly we see the scams and etc that's that's being you know forced upon us and um and then it kind of played into the pandemic too that things are are really difficult right now for a lot of people so we just figured 2020 was a fitting name for the doom as you said and and uh the year that we were having as well and then the the riff that kind of started it off uh i was talking about it on a past podcast the orphan riff you know because you can find these riffs and they can just be a new like a a whole new song that you never you're like this is never going to be anything but this one riff you know you can really like create whole songs out of just the right thing you know but as far as like i have the same experience you know you just you just have a song that you thought was going to be about one thing and then by the time you finish it something in the world has happened like obviously uh you know the elephant in the room like the the covid and the pandemic and all that yeah Yeah, so it reminds me of sorry go ahead Uh, no, I was going to say, Bill, Bill, you wrote that riff. I mean, that intro riff, there was something that just had a tone that as soon as the riff hit, it just you just felt it. And it, not that it was anything necessarily special, but you could it, it set a tone. And, and that's why we kind of started the album right after our opening track, a fast track. We went into our, you know, the first song on the album just had that tone and it it evokes a feeling at it out of you right away. I mean, any comments when you were writing it? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I really, you know, I like using different like chord structures and that's kind of um, what a couple of the notes in that song are just or a couple of the chords are just kind of dissonant, you know, but they still really fit well with the melody line. And so I really like it when there's like instead of, you know, I mean, obviously uh, we can follow, you know, kind of regular chord progressions and we do. But I always like to throw in, if I can, just some unique chord that still fits really well with the melody lines, but it just it gives the song a little bit of tension instead of like, I like to be like, okay, well the melody, it's all about the melody line, but like if there's a chord or something that's like, wow, that's kind of unexpected. Like I was expecting it to be this chord because you know, that would be what comes next naturally. But like, I'm always like, "Mm, I don't know. Like I really enjoy mixing it up and doing different chords. And so for me, 2020 has some of those dissonant kind of chords in it, but it's still a very melodic song and it just fits Mm -hmm. perfectly. And so when I gave them, when I send them stuff, it's usually like, I don't write like Mike and Jesse where, you know, they send, okay, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, you know, outro, done. I'm like, part one, part two, part three. You, you know, it could be whatever. I just kind of leave it to them like, okay, you guys 
work with it. If you feel like this riff is going to be a great chorus, do it. I'm like, you can rearrange it. Cause at first they were like, I think uh, they'll be like, well, do you want this to be the chorus or verse? And I just tell them whatever you think will fit, you know, do what, do what serves the song. For me, it's all about the song. And so I don't have any particular attachment to like, this has got to be a verse or this has got to be a chorus or this has got to be a bridge or an intro or outro. And so, you know, they just take the songs and run with it. And I feel like the more we've gotten, I mean, we've done two albums together. We've done Sound the Sirens and uh, Dreamers. And so uh, Dreamers just came together a lot more smoothly because we just were very familiar with each other. Uh, all of us mm -hmm. in terms of musicians, uh, we understood what our strengths and weaknesses are. And, and like, it just, the flow of this preparation for Dreamers was just way different than Sound of the Sirens, where we were still kind of figuring each other out. We only recorded that first one about six months after we got together. So this one was, we've been on tour together several times. We just came to know each other in a way that like, as you know, like it just, you, you just have a synergy there. And like, I know exactly what Davey's going to play on drums before he even plays it now. You know, you just start to feel like, yep, I know what you're going to do. And I don't know. It's just, that's what's so great about this record is that um, in producing riffs, I'm always thinking like, well, I know how Jesse writes. Jesse writes differently than Mike writes. You know, they just have different styles, you know? And so if I'm sending something to Mike, I send certain songs to Mike where I'm like, Mike, this is going to be a Mike song. Mike's going to do this, uh, this song. And then there's other songs where I'm like, this is a Jesse song. So I'll send it to him. I'll always send it to both. But I feel like I know which songs Jesse's going to be like, yep, I want that one. And I know which songs are riffs. Mike's going to be like, yep, I want that one. So that, that's what's neat about uh, how this all came together. It's just like the, the understanding of each other as musicians has really, really uh, improved over time. And so I'm really looking forward to the next record. And we play to our reason. strengths too, which is really important. You know, I don't try to write stuff that I'm I'm not necessarily good at, which, you know, sometimes people criticize us that we're not pushing the envelope a little bit, but we really enjoy that melodic 90s kind of in your face, catchy, upbeat. Like you said, it's even got the kind of H2O chants and such. We love it. I wish mm -hmm. there were more bands putting out more music like that. So we'll do it. Yeah. And we'll be happy to. And what do they want you to do? Add some delay on the guitar or something like what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I know. And, and I was, I always think like, well, the music we're putting out is 2021 punk because it's happening yeah. right now. You know, I mean, yeah. 90s punk sure it started, but like every band that puts out music now is now music. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, Absolutely. So <laughs> I kind of, I kind of reject that. Like, oh, this is only this style or this style. It's like, no, this is 2021 punk because yeah. we just released it. So that's a great. That's a great way of putting it. I like that. And and, and not enough bands uh, lean on their new stuff. I mean, I, everybody promotes their newest thing or whatever, but like, but uh, I really feel like if you're in a band making music, you should be the most excited about putting yeah. out new stuff, not just you know playing the hits or whatever. Um, sure. I think things have I things are gonna things have changed anyway. They're constantly changing and. And like, like you guys are saying, you know, just because you love a style of music, it doesn't mean it's not modern to play it right now. Yeah. And uh, there's not enough bands, like you're saying, doing this style of music. I, I, well, I agree you, with you, to be honest. You guys, are, you guys are doing a good job of that, Mike, with MXPX. Like your newer material still has the same resemblance of your older material. You promote it heavily. The fans love it. It's still, it's all quality music. Obviously bands are always going to evolve. I mean, we're talking about something that was 20 years ago now, right? Mm -hmm. But you guys stay true to the roots. And I think that that's kind of what we're about. It certainly is just, this is the music we love. It's the music that our fans expect from us. There certainly ain't much money in it. <laughs> so there's, <laughs> no reason, there's no reason to necessarily change or, or do anything different than what we love and what they love. So we're just gonna, you know, to the fans, I mean, the next album is going to be the same. It'll be different. It'll be better. It'll have growth and it'll evolve, but it's going to stay to the same roots. Yeah, I think it's the roots, you yeah. know. And, and yeah. MXPX has had hardcore songs and super poppy melodic songs, so we've kind of done done everything anyway. So from from there, yeah. it's just write a good song. That that's what we're trying to do every time. Exactly. Every time, write a good yeah. song. That's exactly what we're about. Yeah. So sorry, Bill. I. Uh, yeah, no, I was just going to say, you know, like, if as long as, like people that listen, music lovers, they, I, you know, regardless of the genre, I always know, like, when you just feel something is just genuine and that I always feel like, you know, you can just feel that like a band is like delivering the thing that they're not trying to do anything, you know, that 
doesn't feel comfortable for them. They, they're trying to yeah. deliver what they love to do. And it, you can just feel that it comes off. The, it just pops off the album. For me, it's always I've always felt that way, regardless of whether the genre was metal or hardcore or pop or punk or whatever. It's like, I don't know. I've always loved music like that because like, you can just feel it. It's like, yep, this is like this is what they do. This is who they are. And, and I love hearing it. It's authentic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think you guys said it really well in your song, Good Times. You know, it really encapsulates. Uh, I don't know. I love the lyrics, the uplifting vibe to it. Um, you know, the bass line, by Thanks. the way, is great. Good Thanks. job. Stole, stole, stole that one from Scott Shiflett, of course. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, he's the man. Thanks, Scott is you. the man. He's but, the man. He's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, and you guys have a great video for that. It's just fun. It's everybody, you know, just you guys and all your friends having a good time and... And that that's that's really what we're about, you know. We're the guys at the uh, we're the guys at the festivals in Europe that pretty much don't leave our merch tent. We just sit there and hang out and drink beers and take pictures and sign autographs. And we're you know we're we're actually best friends like in the band, which I think is really kind of rare today. And uh, we just love hanging out and we love hanging out with the, the fans and meeting new friends and you know, you're traveling halfway around the world. So we're just parked at the merch tent hanging out and. It's it's good times. That's what this should all be about, anyway. At least for us at our level. So that's the video really uh, kind of exemplified that and what what we stand for. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, who who wrote that one? Who wrote the shell or started that? Was that you? Is that your that, style? Yeah. The baseline? Yeah, that was, the, yeah. yeah it makes so sense. So that that was one where the, the baseline kind of turned into the song, but the lyrics actually came first, where. Uh, was actually laying in bed and just thinking about, you know, growing up as a kid and all the good times I had and looking back on family and friends. And, and I was like, I want to write a song about that. I'm a very nostalgic person. You know, that's why I said I still have my first bass here with all my mm -hmm. bouncing soul stickers on it. You know, that's, that's how I am. So I want to write a song that was, Hey, you can look back, look at all the fun you had and, but don't forget to keep living. Don't forget that, you know, we're not dead yet. We still got the future ahead of us. Let, mm -hmm. Let's raise a glass and let's celebrate and let's create more good times and good memories together. So those, those kinds of things are important to us. That's a lot of what Chaser's about in our lyrics. Yeah. Just kind of the things you can control in a day in your daily life. I love that. That's, I mean, that's, that's right on. So when you're in bed with the idea do you start writing? Do you do you get your phone out and start typing? Yeah. Or, yeah. No, uh, yeah. And you're kind of like half annoyed because you're like, oh my god, I gotta do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. Yeah, you know exactly. So I'll take the voice memo. Sometimes I'll just talk. I'm whispering. You know, my wife's getting irritated by me. In bed, but but you have to because you know. Yeah, it's gonna be gone. Experience. It'll be gone by the morning. You'll forget. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You literally have to strike while the inspiration, or get it some in somewhat where you can come back to it later. That works. Yeah, exactly. Get it, get it documented. Yeah, uh, documented. Exactly. So you can reference it later. Yeah. So is that the, is that what you guys do? Like from time to time, if you have an idea, do you just like hum it into your phone on the voice memos? You do that, Bill, <laughs> with riffs at all, or is it all plain? Uh, the ones they sent me are always all playing, like on acoustic guitar, and there's usually like a melody. And, you know, humming or, you know, sometimes it's funny because Mike will like hum a solo, a guitar solo. He'll be uh, like, <laughs> went in, went in, went you know, it's, it's yeah. kind of like. And so, uh, but I, at least he gets, I get an idea of where he's heading with that. And then, you know, Jesse will sometimes play a whole solo. So there's some solos on the record that Jesse wrote that he really likes. And I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I, again, in this band, there's really no egos or anything. It's like, whatever fits the song, whether whoever writes it, whoever comes up with it, we just whatever serves a song, you know? So that's yeah. always the nice thing is that it doesn't, you know, there's, <laughs> it's not like somebody's like, well, I did this or I want to do this or, you know, it's like, no, just who, whatever is the best idea gets in the song period. Yeah. So. And ever, is there, is there a BPM uh, minimum? Oh, in the band. <laughs> there uh, used, to, there used to not be. <laughs> all, yeah. But all of a sudden, so we went in to record the, the album Sound the Sirens and we thought we had all our BPMs correct. And so we're looking at the engineer and he's looking back at us and he's like, dude, Davey's all over the board. He's nowhere near the BPMs that you guys wrote down for me. And we found out that he's playing like, what, 20, 30 BPMs faster than we intended. And we <laughs> learned he's, he's a wild animal. We had to just open up the cage, take off the shackles and just let him go. 
and the songs ended up so much faster than they originally <laughs> were were intended. But we loved it, and we just loved it. And we realized, all right, we can you know slow the vocals down a little bit on the cadences, let the drums just blaze, and that kind of morphed into the modern sound as well. He doesn't get tired, huh? <laughs> <laughs> double bass? Does he use the double bass, double bass pedal, or single kick pedal, pedal, kick pedal? Yeah, he, is, he uses a double. Double. I, I mean, know. once you get yeah, that I'll, fast, I'll it, it's hard to be consistent and in, to to do the double kick on a single. Sure. I think. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane, though. That is insane. That's that's pretty cool, though. That's a pretty funny story that you just like let him go. <laughs> we we yeah we really did. And the engineer's like, hey guys, I kind of think it sounds better, but like we went from like 180 on a song to like 220. It's all right, let it let let it go, let it be. People, and, and, that that is insane. People, like when we switch our like, I think I think I could bump up a little bit. Put it up, put it up two. four beats, two beats. Yeah, yeah. Well, like yeah, like yeah, subtly, yeah, exactly. can't barely feel yeah. it. Well. And, and the last time on uh, the last record of Dreamers, we worked with um, Paul Miner. And uh, so we did some pre-production uh, with him. And the nice thing was we just it was part of like the last time we did do uh, we did just we didn't do any pre-production with the engineer. We just went in and we we're like, all right, let's start tracking. But with Paul, we did that. And then he kind of like tapped it like we just played it live. And he said, OK, we're just going to like tap out the tempos. Uh, what is Davey playing naturally at? What are you guys like practicing at? And so. From there, we had like a much better template. Okay, it's like okay, Davey's playing this song at 178. How about you know? And then we'd play it again. Like we'd start playing. He's like, okay, yeah. let's try to like we'd all practice to the click. It'd be like, all right, let's bump it up to 180. You know, like Mike yeah. would sing to 178. He'd be like, ah, it seems like it's sluggish a little bit. So we were just able to make changes on the margins, uh, and we were just so much better. Like it was comfortable for what Davey was doing. So we didn't have to like it wasn't like he was fighting the click. He was mm -hmm. like flowing with it, and it just when he got in there, he just like killed it. It was just like, we, it was so much easier. I think we only spent maybe two and a half days on drum tracking. It wasn't yeah, we, too much. We were holding him back on the prior album. I mean, yeah. He yeah. We needed to go faster. Yeah. He's a thoroughbred. Yeah. You got to let him run. Got to let that yeah. guy run. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was just, it turned out just a way better and it was like a lot less stressful. And so I ended, just ended up tracking much quicker too. Uh, so it, uh, we, we definitely, it was a it was a learning experience, and obviously we kind of fixed that <laughs> that little issue we were having. So yeah, I think especially for punk rock and the, the style of of stuff that we kind of like genres that we do, if it's so hard to do, you probably should change the part. Like if you can't get it, you know, it, <laughs> yep. it, yeah. And yes, recording can be hard. Honestly, like it can be grueling. It is often, but but overall, like if you're having the experience where you just can't figure it out you can't like record which you guys obviously can but i feel like i learned that a long time ago just change the part just figure out how to make it work and and you know we've had to do that a lot in the past in in the studio as we're playing but i think now yeah. we kind of get that whole thing and we just naturally do we do what we need to do in practice you know like there's a, there's a few riffs you know a few new songs we're working on that's like okay it's not it's not sounding pretty yet but uh <laughs> We'll get it. We'll, yeah. We'll figure it out. Oh, we're the same way. Yeah. We, when we're practicing together, we can tell right away. Somebody will stop and be like, that part's really clunky. We need to like, you know, do something different there because it's like, if it just sounds, you know what I mean? Like when you're yeah. playing, it's just like, everyone's kind of loose. It's like, ah, that's going to yeah. sound kind of ugly. So, but, but um, you also, you also know when, okay, you know, the pieces are there and the ingredients are there. We can make this work. You know, you kind of have that experience and insight to know that it'll work when we get to the studio level, you know, we'll, we'll be able to, to fine tune it and make it work. Yeah. But as Bill was saying earlier, for us, there's no ego. I mean, we're pretty ruthless with each other that, Hey, that's not going to work. It's <laughs> definitely not, not the best melody you can come up with, you know, try, try again. <laughs> So. That's good. I'm sure that I'm sure Mike, the singer, gets gets all the shit right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I well, because I do in my band, but um, a little bit for your your little whiz, our guitar player dishes it out to everybody. Actually, pretty pretty well. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the uh, it's just I, I had I wanted to know about taking it from from an acoustic or just like a solo song in a, you know, a shell to the band. Do you ever do that before the band hears it? Do you ever just show up with, okay, here's a, here's a song. Let's, let's see what happens. Cause that is fun for me to do. Like just to show up with a song and, and we, 
MXPXify it together. And it always changes. It always is like, oh, I didn't really think about that beforehand when I was playing by myself. And now I don't know what to do. And so like challenges arise for me a lot. And I, I feel like I've never really gotten, I've never gotten past that issue. It's always almost always something, you know? And the only time it's not is if I'm like, okay, I'm going to write a Ramon style song where it's this, 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 yeah. really simple. Then I can like ex know exactly what the drums are going to do and how it's going to feel. But aside from songs like that, like some, a lot of times, like th things that I think is, are going to be one way end up completely different. So I, I'd love to hear your, you guys' takes on some of those ideas. So we, we rarely even write the drums, you know, we leave that to Davey and, and we try not to write too much of the lead riffs, kind of leave that for Bill and not step on each other's toes. Mm -hmm. But when we come, when, before we bring the the uh, the song to the studio, to the practice studio, you know, when we wrote this album, it was before COVID. So we were still with tours in between and promoting our prior album. And so most of the time in the practice studio was spent getting ready for the next show or the next, the next set sure. and also learning the new songs. So we, we, what we did is when we're not in the studio and we don't have the studio time and, and Davey, you know, on the drums, we'd just be here, the three of us, me, Bill and, and Mike, working through the song structures. And for the most part, we would take the song structure. Now we have the structure down. We don't know what all the little pieces are going to be, but then we would take it to the studio and just show Davey, hey, bud, here, here's, you know, play what you want to play, but here are the tempos and the structure and the cadences and such. And we would bring that. And then some songs will absolutely show up and say, hey, guys, you know, we got 15 minutes left in practice. Can we jam something new, something you never heard? And one of us will start playing the riff and the rest of us will kind of follow along and jump in. And I think one of my favorite things of being in, in a band or writing music is the moment the song comes to life for the first time with the drums, with the bass, with the melodies and the harmonies. That's one of that's a magical moment as a songwriter because you put so much time into the details. And when you hear it, outside of your head for the first time, but in the studio, that's a blast. So, so we like bringing those concepts to the team and let's, like you said, MXP, we say chaserify, we kind of yeah. just chaserify <laughs> it. And yeah, it's, it, that we do a lot of that too. That's awesome. Yeah. There's, there's a, uh, a story I have about, um, uh, the opening track on dreamers fight of our lives, uh, that when Mike, that's the total Mike song, it's super fast, mm -hmm. you know, and he had the idea, he sent me the little, like, kind of voice recording of it with, with him playing acoustic guitar. And I just, I love, I just love, I was like, man, that's a, that's going to make a killer opening track. I really felt that because it's just, it's out, right out of the gate. It's just like, yeah. a he it's a heavy hitter. And so I was yeah. like, okay. I, I was going to say, it's like, it starts out like a carpet bombing. Like it just hits yeah. you. It's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. So I was just like, I love like the bad religion always does it. I just love the idea of just hitting them hard right out the gate, you know, just like, it's a real fast, quick song. We did it on the uh, Uprising with uh, Sound of Sirens as well. But um, anyway, he brought the song and we were like, it was, I think, I don't really know if Jesse was there uh, in the studio, but it was Davey, I know it was Davey, Mike and I, and he was like, uh, okay, he's like, here's the song, you know, so we start playing it. And there was like the kind of thing like of the evolution. He just had it like, okay, Davey, just play fast, you know, play fast, punk beat, whatever. And that's where we usually start with like a lot of fast songs. And then it was like, okay, I heard so I was like, no, we should, I was like, during the verse, you should like switch to like a backbeat, you know what I mean? And then after the back, short backbeat spot, then jump into the fast punk beat. And so it's the little things like that. Mm -hmm. And then Mike wrote a really cool bridge and we had the kind of like stop and go component where like instruments cut out and they cut back in, you know, it's just like, you know, that's the kind of stuff where you can take what's kind of a standard fast punk song. You know, the bones are there, you know, it's going to be good, but it's like all those little kind of just mix up and that song has a lot of really cool little stop and go parts where everything's like syncopated a lot of syncopated drums and, and riffing on the bass and the uh and the guitar i just i love that song for that reason it's like it seems like a standard punk song but if you listen to it you can just hear a lot of little intricacies there and that's i, I don't know that song turned out way better than i may have thought it would at the beginning would yeah, you agree too. jesse <laughs> i wasn't even a fan in the very beginning so yeah, definitely. It's a lot of the nuances that really that we focus on to take a song from being a good song to a great song, you know, rather than just or, or an average song to being a good song. That's really important to us. It's kind of what we touched on earlier that every little moment in the song has to has to. Yeah, you got to be able to feel it. You got to be able to connect with the with the listener. And 
do you like to do you like the listener to sort of like be taken for a ride and be absolutely yeah be surprised sometimes maybe sometimes pleasantly surprised like there's that breakdown it's like pretty short and then it does like a guitar solo right and so it's like hardcore and then you know it's got those styles mixed in and it it really like i was saying earlier it just sounds cool mixed in with that southern california punk style um Yeah, really well done. The new, like, what other nuances do you guys? There's got to be some things you're like, oh, we've done that a couple times. But hey, it sounds different on this song. Let's do it. Because <laughs> MXPX definitely has those. But I'd like, I, I think maybe some of the 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 pop mutes, Bill. A lot of the pop mutes kind of in. The, I mean, I don't mean to sell sell ourselves out here, but <laughs> a lot of the pop mutes, you know, coming going into the verses and <laughs> such and. We kind of overuse a few things, some of the vocal harmonies, maybe some of the haze and the gang vocals and the shouts. But but again, it's kind of our sound. You know, Mike and I got a cool back and forth dynamic on back and forth on vocals. And and uh, Bill's the, just the king of rhythm guitar for sure. Got just a strong uh, rhythm guitar. So I don't know. I think I think there's a few <laughs> things that maybe we overuse a little bit. I, the one that's coming hard, is definitely our pot pa- meets and our chugs. It's hard when you when you think of a song as being one song. It needs certain things, and then yeah. it changes when there's you know a bunch of songs on a, on a, gr- a group of songs, ten songs or more, or whatever. It changes because you're like, okay, well now this song by itself should be this, but should I change it based on all the other songs in relation? Yeah, we, you know? we already did that on the other song. I mean, hey, guys, we got three songs where we're doing that now. We may need to cha- change one. Yeah, yeah. intros, yeah, exactly. keys. Yeah, like, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 think we, I think we do enough to try to mix it up. I would say, yeah, sometimes we have to switch up keys, you know, a little bit because it's like, well, a progression is, a, you know, there are some kind of standard progressions yeah. that is used and, you know, Western music that just like, are used across the board regardless of style. Uh, so we do try to switch it up and uh, change the keys within. And again, it really matters that once you change the key or you move it up a half step, like that'll change the harmony uh, ability. Sometimes it's like, wow, that harmony would sound great, but are we going to be able to nail that live? You know, like, mm, yeah. <laughs> so we have to dial it back and maybe we, we haven't done any tuning. We, we stick a standard tuning. We don't do like E flat or anything like that. So um, we do have to operate within that parameter of like standard tuning. Yeah. Um, because and we no, just no drop D, range. no drop D. Yeah, uh, yeah, no drop D. And that's the thing. We, we so just you're a real guitar point, player. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> no drop <laughs> D for me. Um, but like, I just you know we always just decided like okay we're just gonna stay with this parameter you know and if that means you know it it, it does become a struggle you're like oh like we and we do talk about sameness like we don't want it to be like. Well, that song just sounded exactly like this other song, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. There, there is a lot. There is a lot of those discussions. That's the struggle, and that's. I mean, that's for anybody in in a in a band like ours. You know, we we do the same things. We're like, okay, have we done this kind of intro in a while? It's like, right. <laughs> what are we gonna do here? But uh, it's a discussion, and and a lot of times you just gotta listen back and listen to the songs in a group, and then you can yeah. tweak little things um, that probably aren't a problem. Like I said in and of itself but in a group of songs you do you do have to think about and do listeners think about that not usually should they no that's not their job it's our job right (laughs) yeah to worry about that (laughs) i would love to you know uh, as we're getting getting to the towards the end i'd love to talk about like routines your day-to-day nowadays like what is it like and it doesn't have to be just about the band, but like, how does the band interact with your your daily lives? How much are you guys working on the band stuff these days? All the time. I mean, without being able to tour. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So this album, quickly, this album we finished recording in April of 2020. That's when it went to the blasting reel for mixing and mastering, etc. So we finished tracking in I don't know February or March. So we were we had plans to put it out before summer and jump on our summer tour and et cetera. And that got shut down obviously for a year and then another year. So the last couple of I guess last year and a half now, all we could do for the band was write new music and promote the hell out of this album and just promote the band and just grassroots on social media and whatever we could do to just stay connected with the fans. So one thing that everybody knows about us is we're all very accessible online and on social media where we engage with all the fans and all the comments and so we we still focus on the band daily even though there's only there's not you know there's no shows and there's 
not much that we can do, but it's still a, a big part of our daily routine. Right on. I agree, but we do have some shows coming up finally, which is super, yeah. which is super exciting. Nice. So we're actually having we're actually having our record release party in Costa Mesa uh, next Saturday, and so that's uh, uh, our first show in a year, first show in a year and a half, which is pretty cr- pretty crazy to think about. That's awesome. That's J- January 2020 with Pennywise. That was the last one. That was really? the last time we were on stage. It's just crazy. Do you have any anything yeah. coming up in August? We do. We. Yeah, we'll be in uh, Big Bear, uh, California, with uh, Gutter Mouth and Death by Stereo and Di. Di. Yeah, Di. The line. Yeah. Yeah. Just starting out doing some festivals, mainly, aside from your yeah. record release. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah, we'll see if there's any tour for uh, for fall winter. We haven't started booking any of that yet, and we we of course we have for next summer. We have all the. Uh, Spum Fest and Punk Rock Holidays and the, Euro- the European run, European festival run booked for next summer. So is Europe sort of like you're bigger than you, in Europe than you are here or, or what's the situation with that? Like you guys tour a lot in Europe these days or have for a while, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think just dif- different scene, you know, we were in, yeah. I, we, we didn't have the luxury of kind of being around in the early 90s in the U.S. when the melodic punk was what it was, mm-hmm. you know, 94, 96, 98, et cetera. So for us being in the two thousands, it's kind of after it left its mark. So for, for us, our fan base is bigger in Europe and in Canada as well. Yeah. I mean, it was really, really tough in those years that you guys were starting out to be a newer act. It really, really yeah. was in, especially in the U S was probably the hardest, but uh, Canada has always embraced punk rock so much and Europe yeah. as well. And you guys would, they would love you in Australia. I don't know if you've been to Australia. We, we haven't yet. That's they, soon, hopefully. They would love you in Australia and Japan, honestly. Like you guys, yeah. you guys definitely have, there's markets that you still haven't even tapped. And now that yeah. you're, you're doing your best work now, honestly, I feel like, you know, the future is really bright. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. Good. Thank you. Where can, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. For us, that, no, that's Dreamers. You know, that's the album. I mean, to think that uh, one day we'll be playing in Australia and Japan. And I mean, that's, that's kind of the whole meaning of the album is just dream big and chase your dreams. And uh, the fact that we're sitting here hanging with Mike Carrera on a podcast. I mean, if, <laughs> if you rewind 20 years for me, this you know, I never would have thought that this day would come. So for us, touring Europe, I mean, that's that's incredible. That's truly a lifelong accomplishment for me. And that's kind of why we went with that theme for the album and the album title. Actually, sorry, quick story. Sure. Uh, first song, first song I ever wrote was actually, um, cold and alone changing the lyrics when I was like 12 years old. That was (laughs) seriously. So for us, that's kind of what dreamers was about was we're just a bunch of kids playing punk rock. And here we are touring Europe and talking about one day going to Australia and Japan doing what we love. So, for anybody listening, keep chasing. Keep chasing. I love that. Where can everybody find you online? Chaserpunkrock.com will be the one uh, one stop shop. All our socials are on there, videos, uh, tour dates, everything. Chaserpunkrock.com is where you'll find everything you need. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, what about, do you guys, and I'll just get all your handles from there. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we're uh, on Facebook. It's Chaser Band. On Instagram, it's Chaser Punk. Punk, and yeah, and we're we're on there all the time. We're all over YouTube's Chaser Punk. So we got it all. Go subscribe to the YouTube. Yeah, YouTube's been good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah. Is there anything else you guys wanna wanna say before we wrap it up? This has been awesome, by the way. You guys are awesome, man. Great record. Just keep putting out music that's quality like this, and and keep pushing it up. And and I think you guys are just gonna keep. Keep extending your life and keep going out there, man. I, I'm I'm glad to have met you guys finally. Yeah. yeah thanks, well, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, us too. thanks. Thanks so much for having us, man. And um, you know, for those listening, just uh, we really look forward to seeing you out of the show. That's where we really like to connect with everybody. And so, thank you for listening to Dreamers. If you have, and if you haven't already, come see us at a show. We'll play a bunch of Dreamers and we'll hang out. And uh, we look forward to meeting you guys. All right, and cool. To every, and to everybody listening, just uh, be kind, be nice, be good people, take care of your neighbor. We're all in this together. We'll see you guys soon. Stay safe. 
Stay safe. Well said. All right. Love it. Love Thanks, it. Bill. Thanks, Thanks Jesse. Thanks again, Mike. Have right. a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.